Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the plays and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, where are you going? Isn't it a wonderful day for a walk? I'm just walking around the estate. Wait for me. Don't walk too far. It's an awfully big estate. This family's ancestral mansion's got to be big. I find it very hard to think of me being an ancestor. <laughs> You know, I think I'm going to make a wonderful mother. After all, I was very bright when it came to picking out my descendant's father. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. Anything special I've done? You have designed such a wonderful addition to the house that it looks as though it could have been built in 1762. Well, I'm not sure that's altogether a compliment. <laughs> After all, we're supposed to have made a little progress. The new wing looks a little odd. It's only just bones still, of course. Well, we'll get some flesh on it soon. When will that happen? Just as soon as the bones have settled. Oh, I can't wait. I'm just bursting to see it. Then we'll have to paint its clothes on. <laughs> Why can't it all hurry, David? You'll have to wait. Maybe a while. They can't paint green wood, and that certainly is green wood. Everything is getting green. That's because it's almost spring. <laughs> David, our first robin. Don't you think it's a little big and a little black to be a robin? It's just an old black crow. Crow? Oh, isn't that terrible? Do we have to scare it away? Go on, make a face at him. Go ahead. I don't want to scare him away. In fact, I love him. He's our first animal. <laughs> he's not an animal. He's a bird. Well, he's our first bird, then. And as far as I'm concerned, he's our last one. Listen to the chickens over at Jared Tucker's place. Aren't we going to raise chickens? I should say not. Nothing smaller than cows. With horns? Well, that all depends. We've got lots of room for them, haven't we? And you're trying to cover every inch of it this morning. Well, I know we won't have a chance to do any walking after Julia and Hartley get here. I'm beginning to wish they were here already. Oh, you're tired, darling. A little. I'm sorry, I didn't think. I guess it is a pretty steep hill. Mm. Oh, but look at the view of the house from here. It's all ours. Yours and mine. Oh, we might share it with a few other Nortons in the near future. And don't forget the cows. Mm, we're putting them in the barn. <laughs> it's a lovely red barn. We'll be when, he, when we're finished with it. We're going to rebuild that, too? That's just what I came up here for, to see what we'll have to do to it. We've already spent lots more money on this house than we expected to. All the more reason for not skimping on the but barn. But why do we have to spend money on a house for the cows? I thought they lived out of doors anyway. Now, you don't want our neighbors saying that the Nortons are cruel to cows, I don't do you? want them saying we're cruel to our mortgage, either. We still have a little money left over. Well, that doesn't mean we have to spend it just because we have it. Claudia, this is a farm we have here. If we don't use it as a farm, we're, we're being unfaithful to it. We're mistreating it. We're not letting it be the kind of place it has to be. And in the end, we'll, we'll have to pay the penalty. David, how much money is it going to cost? Well, let's see. Come on inside. Oh, it's so cold in here. Well, that's the first thing we're going to do is heat it. Oh, no, that costs... Well, David, you know how much it costs. It was the most expensive part of our alterations in the house. We're not going to have a thermostat, you know. That little thing? How much can that say? <laughs> Cheer up, darling. It's not going to have a very complicated heating system. Just the cows being here will warm it. Oh, they make their own heat. Isn't that convenient? And, of course, we're going to have a concrete floor here. David, oh, no. Oh, yes. You can't have a decent cow barn without a concrete floor. Oh, you and your cows. I bet you 20 cents you don't know half as much about cows as you pretend. I bet you don't even know how to milk one. Sure, I know how to milk one. But we're going to get a milking machine. Oh, no. But we, uh, we won't get that for five more years. Five more years? We won't have any mortgage left at all. <laughs> you mean we won't have anything left except the mortgage? Well, whatever I mean, I mean we won't have any money. Oh, darling, we'll have a lot more than money, though. We'll have six sons, knock wood, two cows, you, me, and one black crow. 
Not to forget a brother and sister-in-law who are going to get their first look at Norton Land any minute. Come on out. Let's go back to the house and meet them. David, we're really not going to do anything to the barn, are we? I don't think we should spend a penny for it. Always a bargain, honey. You can't have a farm without a barn. You can't have a barn without a floor. And, darling, wait till you see. We'll have the best barn on River Road. Hey, there they are. Come on, let's hurry. It's all right for the guests to be politely late, but we're not the guests. Yoo-hoo, Julia! It's us. We, it's we. Oh, that sounds so silly. It's Julia. Look, she's waving. Well, of course she's waving. You didn't expect Julia to shout. Am I terrible for shouting? Not terrible, but I'm glad we don't live in a hotel. <laughs> oh, we made it. So I see. Hello, Hartley. Hartley. <laughs> isn't it wonderful? Well, it's a, it's a real farm, isn't it? Hello, Claudia. Hello, Hello Julia. David. Oh, it's amazing how much colder Connecticut is than New York. Reminds me almost of Boston. The climate, I mean. Did you have trouble finding it? Oh, no, not too much. You're really quite near the Riddles. Well, we like to think that the Riddles are near us. <laughs> uh, you gave us very good directions, and Williston's really expert at following directions. We've yet to have a chauffeur who isn't good at following directions, as long as Hartley rides in the front seat and tells him which way to go. <laughs> Must be wonderful to know which way to go. I'm always getting lost. Lost, eh? Only among the unimportant things, I think. Claudia, you look wonderful. Farming agrees with you. Oh, that's too delightful, farming. They aren't farming yet. We aren't even living here yet. I think when you've decided to farm, that makes you emotionally a farmer. Don't they both look wonderful, Julia? They always did. I think there's something a little extra about this time. It might be, you know, because they're cold. Maybe go inside. Yeah, certainly, but it won't be much warmer in there. The heat isn't turned on. Well, at least we'll be out of the wind. Come on, David, produce the key to your mansion. Oh, my, that's an attractive door. Have you decided what kind of cows you're going to have? The kind with horns. <laughs> that describes an awful lot of cows. <laughs> Come on, Claudia, we can go inside, too. Yes. David, this house has great dignity, hasn't it? I can understand now how you happen to be attracted to it. Well, we did our best not to injure its integrity when we made our additions. You've done a wonderful piece of work. Hartley, did you notice the ingenious way this annex is being attached? David's made it seem an integral part of the whole. Yes, he certainly has. And it's a fine-looking farm. Did you notice how they've kept the original stairs? Isn't that a magnificently balanced flight? You know, Hartley, our New England ancestors had a very good eye for design and craftsmanship. Mm. Which I'm afraid too many of us today have forgotten about. They also knew how to hack a farm out of this woodland. If you've ever seen the rocks in a Connecticut field, you'd wonder how anybody ever cleared it for tilling. Oh, they just built stone walls for fences. When the stone walls were finished, their fields were clear. David even wants mm. to remodel the barn so it'll be just like an apartment house for cows. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> you really think so too, Hartley? Oh, you men and your barns. Hartley, I'd like you to notice the way David designed this large living room window. I don't know why you sound so surprised, my dear. David was always an excellent architect. Mm, they've handled it with taste and imagination. Don't you think so, Hartley? Fine, fine. I'll be very happy when Nancy Riddle sees how you treated this room. Nancy's been trying for years to obtain the same result that David's achieved on his very first attempt. Of course he has. David, do you have any idea how many people, and I mean substantial people, in this neighborhood are living in old houses of this type? Quite a few, I suppose. Well, there aren't any other houses like this one. This one is something special, David says. And besides, Julia... How few of your substantial people are even substantial enough to farm their own grounds? I wish, Hartley, you could manage to talk about farming without giving the impression that the nearest you ever got to the land was the 18th green of your golf club. Well, David and Claudia are going to farm, and I think they'll be very happy here. Well, I can think of other ways of passing their time up here which would be more appropriate, more lucrative, and I think more interesting. Play polo with the riddles, my dear? No, I think that's hardly in David's line. David, can you play polo? Yeah, oh, sure. Why, when I served with the King's Own West Sussex Rifles, <laughs> I played polo without a horse. You played without a horse? <laughs> and you lie without a conscience. You're very amusing, but I'm very serious, David. Seems to me you have a real opportunity here to develop a reputation. David is developing quite a fine reputation as an industrial architect. There's no reason why, in addition, he shouldn't become a real specialist in the modernization of these Connecticut houses. Well, Claudia and I are building a, a home, Julia. Not setting up a roadside stand to do business in. But, David, now you must admit that the people for whom you'd do some of this renovating might give you some of the other opportunities you're looking for. Yes, you know, David, they, 
There's something in what Julia says. After all, the Riddles, the McPhersons, the Reeds, and the Frosts have considerable industrial interests. And you certainly won't meet them if they think you're just a couple of farmers. Isn't that so, Hartley? Well, I, I guess there's something to that, too. But we, we didn't come up here to meet people. We came up here because... Because... Because what? Well, because here, Julia, by, by ourselves, on our own land, was the way we wanted to live. David, it's really very important to remember that, first of all, you are an architect. Well, I do remember. I don't think that you should get sidetracked by these notions of farming, which are, after all, to someone in your position, really a trifle romantic. Do you really think farming will be romantic? I knew it was going to be fun, but for a lot of other reasons. You're very sweet, my lamb. I'm afraid very young. You mean, Julia, that I should spend my time up here designing and redesigning other people's old houses? Yes, some of your time. Why not? You've got a real taste for it. This charming house now. You've treated it with great imagination. It would be very easy for well, you to... thank you, Julia. And yet, when Hartley and I approached it from the road, what we noticed first was a large red barn. From the road, it looks very much like any old farmer's house. I think that when you finish the house, you should tear down that barn. It cost you very little money, much much less probably than patching well, it up. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that isn't the way I look at this place at all. But, David, after all, isn't renovating that barn going to be a very expensive procedure? It is not. Darling, we were just saying that it would be. David, it's not expensive since we have the money. But that's all the money we have. And this is all the farm we have. We mustn't spoil it. You mean that... You're ready to go ahead with rebuilding the barn? It's what you want, isn't it? And that, Julia, is the formula for a happy marriage. Darling. <clears throat> the market, the market was a jolly enough song once upon a time, but many housewives fail to see the fun in it today. If you're one of those... Here's an idea. Look for that familiar red cooler during your marketing and take time to enjoy the pause that refreshes. After inviting well-iced Coke, somehow the day's errand seemed to get accomplished with greater ease. More and more food stores are installing Coke coolers now to help you shop refreshed. You know, Mr. King, Claudia and David's farm is really a lovely place. Well, it uh, gradually seems to be working out, doesn't it, Mrs. Norton? I hope they'll be happy their way. I was very impressed with what David's done with the house. Now the next big job, he's starting on the grounds. So soon? Yes. The uh, tree surgeon is coming over tomorrow. I know what that means, unfortunately. Unfortunately? Exactly. Tree surgeons aren't a very optimistic lot, but... Well, anyway, that's for Claudia and David to learn about and worry about. Goodbye, Mr. King. Uh, Hartley and I have got to hurry back to town. Now, goodbye, Mrs. Norton. Have a nice trip. Well, as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.